Scenes from McGill Training Center as Fort Meade's COVID vaccinations get underway. Hello and welcome to the first Meade week of the year. I'm Brian Spann. More on the vaccinations in a moment. Also this week, Fort Meade receives Army Community Partnership Award, changes at the access control points, and our podcast, Fort Meade Declassified, celebrates its first anniversary. These stories and more, but first, Kimbrough Ambulatory Care Center received an initial shipment of the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine just before the new year. Last week, the first doses were administered to fire and emergency services personnel from Fort Meade and the NSA campus. We are hoping in the first two to three weeks to be able to get through the phase 1A category, which includes the health, all the health care workers and first responders on installation. The Moderna product is a two-dose vaccine with the doses taken 28 days apart. Colonel Salazar also addressed questions about the safety of the vaccine. News from the clinical trials is it's 94, over 94 percent effective for patients. So it's a really important tool and I, I just highly encourage everybody to take advantage of the science and the, and the protection that this vaccine can offer. In a related story at this week's Town Hall, Kimbrough and Fort Meade Medic Commander Colonel Tracy Michael talked about progressing through the mandated phases of vaccination priority and that Kimbrough will make every effort to let people know their turn may soon be up. Uh, watch out on the Garrison page, watch out on the Kimbrough page as we progress through those phases forums like this as well, uh, we will announce to you uh, when we're getting uh, within your respective phases and that will give you a, a clear indication. Um, I would ask patients in this area because part of it is based on the availability of the vaccine. Uh, that is the limiting factor for us right now. So if we don't get an allocation of vaccine to sort of keep the effort moving, uh, there are times that we're going to potentially stall because we, we run out of vaccine and we're waiting for that next shipment to come in. In other news this week, the Army recognized Fort Meade along with nine other winners of this year's Army Community Partnership Awards in a virtual ceremony live from the Pentagon. During the ceremony today, we will recognize the U.S. Army installations and their public partners for demonstrating partnership. Thank you, gentlemen, and good morning. Uh, I'm Colonel Chris Nahn, Commander USAG for George G. Meade. Central Maryland is a very rewarding place to live and work, primarily because of the sense of community. And we benefit from many community partners, but are very grateful today to, having, to have the opportunity to recognize uh, one of our most important partners. I'm joined today by Ms. Christy Simon, the CEO of the Central Maryland Chamber of Commerce, and Ms. Lynn Nichols, the chair of the uh, Military Affairs Committee. I can't thank Christy and Lynn, their staff, and the members of the chamber uh, enough for ensuring that the 63,000 residents and workers here on Fort Meade feel like they're welcome members of this community. Thank you. In a related story, the principal deputy to the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Installations, Energy, and the Environment, Mr. Brian Gossage, visited Fort Meade this week. He advises the Secretary of the Army and Chief of Staff on all matters related to installation policy. We had a few minutes to record his initial impressions of Fort Meade. Well, I want to check on uh, our soldiers first and foremost. I want to make sure that the quality of life for our soldiers is what it needs to be. I want to make sure we're taking care of our people. And I want to make sure we're taking care of the place where they work. As you may know, we have a new Army installation strategy that came out, and the focus of that is the where. So we have a people strategy, that's the who, and now we have an Army installation strategy, and that's the where. And of course, there's a crossover between the two because the, the places that you live and work and train uh, affect you know, your, your morale, affect your, your outlook, affect your readiness. And so we wanted to make sure that uh, the impact that we're having, the resources that we're spending, we come in and perform that oversight function and, and check in on our soldiers. I had a great opportunity to have lunch with a half a dozen soldiers and a couple of Marines and talk to them about the, the barracks that they live in. And then we went over and visited the barracks and took a look at those spaces and talked to them about what they like and what improvements we can make. And so that was a huge takeaway for me. And finally this week, a reminder that the latest Fort Meade Declassified podcast is available. It's episode 24, marking the podcast's first year of existence. Congratulations to our co-hosts, Joe Nieves and Sherry Kuyper. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week. The power of one small action, one conversation, or one phone call can make a difference in the life of a veteran going through a difficult time. For free 24-7 confidential support, call the Veterans Crisis Line or the Military Crisis Line.